All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna have a ton of fun memorizing the functions of the 12 cranial nerves. Here in this skull, we can see the 12 cranial nerves. But instead of looking at this skull over here, let's take a look at a split screen. So here we have our big screen over here, where we can see 12 separate scenes. We're gonna talk about each one of these scenes and each one is going to represent a different cranial nerve. So we're gonna go through each one of these 12 scenes. Feel free to watch this whole video twice. And if you'd like, you can check out my site for free review cards and quizzes. So let's begin. All right, in this scene, we're talking about the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one, and it's taking place at this old factory over here. Apparently, this used to be a functional factory, and now it's an old factory. Old factory for olfactory. And this man over here holding the gun reminds us of one, as gun in our scenes reminds us of one. So the olfactory nerve is cranial nerve one. I guess this guy stands up here holding this gun. Maybe he's the one that shot the windows. I don't know. But what I do know is that he's standing on top of this gigantic nose. He likes to stand on top of gigantic noses. Maybe he does it for attention. Maybe because he's just crazy. But this gigantic nose reminds us of the function of the olfactory nerve, and that's for smell. So again, the olfactory nerve represented by the old factory is cranial nerve one, represented by the gun, and this nerve is responsible for smell. All right, let's move on now to cranial nerve two. All right, in this scene, we're gonna talk about the optic nerve, cranial nerve two. And it's represented over here by this eye that's always on top of the shoe. This eye over here always remains inside the shoe. Shoe in our scenes always represents two. So we're talking about cranial nerve two, and the eye reminds us of optic. Now this eye over here is always guarding this post. It makes sure to look around to make sure that no one is coming. It's always looking, which reminds us of what the optic nerve does. It's in charge of vision. So again, the optic nerve is cranial nerve two and is responsible for vision. Let's move on to cranial nerve three. All right, here we're up to cranial nerve three, and that's represented by this tree over here. Tree for three. And next to the tree, we have this octopus over here. This octopus on the motorcycle. Octopus on motor for oculomotor, as cranial nerve three is the oculomotor nerve. We'll talk about this octopus more in a moment. But first, let's take a look at this tree one more time. We see that someone signed it, Mr. Sririo. He said Mr. Sririo was here. Mr. Sririo reminds us of four intraocular muscles which cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor nerve, innervates. Mr. MR for medial rectus, SR for superior rectus, IR for inferior rectus, and IO for inferior oblique. Again, these are the four muscles, the intraocular muscles, which cranial nerve 3 innervates. But there's more that cranial nerve 3 does. Let's take a look at this octopus. Now this octopus over here has oculomotor nerve palsy. His oculomotor nerve on the right side is not working, and that's why he has certain deficits. And through those deficits, we'll learn more about what the oculomotor nerve does. We see that his right eye over here is down and out. For as we mentioned, the oculomotor nerve is responsible for innervating muscles which make the eye move towards the nose, the medial rectus, and make the eye move upward, the superior rectus, and the inferior oblique. And since these muscles aren't working, the eye will be down and out. And this is actually due also to the unopposed actions of the lateral rectus and superior oblique. But what we also see is that there's ptosis in this right eye over here. There's a droopy eyelid. And that's because the oculomotor nerve is also responsible for innervating the levator palcibrae superioris, which raises the eyelid. Furthermore, we can see that this pupil over here is perhaps dilated, which reminds us that the oculomotor nerve is responsible for pupillary constriction through its action on the sphincter pupillae. And that's why this octopus over here who has oculomotor nerve palsy has a dilated pupil in the right eye. And finally, we are seeing double of everything. And that's because in oculomotor nerve palsy, there will be diplopia. And that's because the oculomotor nerve is responsible for action on the ciliary muscle to provide accommodation. And without it, there will be diplopia. All right, that's our scene on oculomotor nerve. Let's move on to cranial nerve four. All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna talk about the trochlear nerve, and it is represented by this truck over here. It's in fact called the trochlear truck. So trochlear truck reminds us of the trochlear nerve. In a minute, we're gonna talk about why there is Superman in pink on the side of the truck. But first we note that this truck is four wheel drive. Even though it has 18 wheels, it's four-wheel drive. Four reminds us of cranial nerve four, as the trochlear nerve is cranial nerve four. Okay, now for Superman in pink. Superman in pink sounds like superior oblique, which reminds us that the muscle innervated by the trochlear nerve is the superior oblique. Let's talk about the function of the superior oblique in a really fun way. 
So you may have noticed that this truck over here is falling inward between these two roads. It's rotating inward and is about to fall down. This reminds us of this function of the superior oblique, internal rotation and depression of the eye. Again, the trochlear nerve innovates the superior oblique, which is involved in internal rotation and depression of the eye. Okay, now that we've spoken about the function of the superior oblique, let's talk about what happens if the trochlear nerve is damaged, such as in trochlear nerve palsy. Here we have this guy on the road over here, and you may have noticed that he's tucking his chin into his chest and he's tilting his head. This is a classic picture of a patient with severe trochlear nerve palsy. Due to the unopposed extortion, the patient tucks their chin in and tilts their head away from where the lesion is. So in this case, since he's tilting his head to the left, he has right trochlear nerve palsy. Okay, I hope you enjoy this scene on the trochlear nerve. Take care. All right, here we're going to discuss the trigeminal nerve. And it's going to be represented by this guy over here who is robbing the bank. And he is stealing three gems. We could see three gems that he has over here. The three gems or the trigem for the trigem trigeminal nerve and we see that he carries these three gems away on this hive over here he has this random beehive that he uses to transport things so this hive reminds us of five as the trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve five let's talk about the function of the trigeminal nerve we take a look at this bank over here and we take a look at this structure this structure over here is actually part of the security system but the robber doesn't realize and we notice that this structure over here is chewing on something We'll talk about what he is chewing, but the fact that he is chewing reminds us of the muscles of mastication, as the trigeminal nerve is responsible for innervating the muscles of mastication. And it does this specifically through the mandibular nerve. Well, let's talk about the three parts of the trigeminal nerve. You may have noticed that this structure over here has three different color coatings on its face. This is going to remind us of the three divisions of the facial dermatomes supplied by the trigeminal nerve. There is V1 corresponding to ophthalmic vision, V2 to the maxillary division, and V3 corresponding to the mandibular division. Again, these are the facial dermatomes which the trigeminal nerve supplies. And then we take a look at this structure, and he is chewing on something as we mentioned. He is chewing on a tent. The tent reminds us of the tensor tympani, that the trigeminal nerve innervates the tensor tympani, which is involved in dampening loud sounds. And finally, this structure over here is using its tongue to try to lick the robber, perhaps in an effort to catch him. But as we see, it says on the anterior two-thirds, sensation. And that's because the trigeminal nerve innervates the anterior two-thirds of the tongue in somatic sensation. This is in contrast to the facial nerve, which supplies taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. All right, so just to review, the trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve 5 represented by the hive. It's involved in mastication, in chewing, as well as facial sensation through the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular divisions. It also innervates the tensor tympani involved in dampening loud sounds, as well as somato sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. All right, let's move on to cranial nerve 6. All right, this is our scene on the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6, and it is taking place in this abduction scene. Here we have the UFO performing an abduction. So abduction reminds us of abducens nerve. And the aliens over here in charge of the abduction are actually sticks, which reminds us of six. So sticks for six, as the abducens nerve is cranial nerve six. Let's talk about the function of the abducens nerve. So we have this guy over here, who's about to be abducted. And he is looking to the side, as the abducens nerve innervates the lateral rectus, which controls lateral movement of the eye. Well, at least this left eye over here is moving laterally. But if you forget that, we have this ladder over here that's red. The ladder that's red for lateral rectus. Again, the abducens nerve cranial 6 innervates the lateral rectus, which is responsible for moving the eye laterally. Okay, let's move on to now to cranial nerve 7. Alright, this is our scene on cranial nerve 7, represented by this clown over here with a really interesting face. This interesting face is going to remind us that this scene is on the facial nerve. Now you may have noticed that his hat is kind of like heaven. He calls this the heaven hat because it kind of looks like heaven. Heaven for seven, as the facial nerve is cranial nerve seven. Now during the show, his face moves a lot, which reminds us that the facial nerve is responsible for facial movement, the muscles in the face, including closing of the eye, represented by this closed eye over here. In the other eye, we see a tear, which reminds us of the lacrimation, and through his ear over here, we see a staple, Staple for stapedius, as the facial nerve is responsible for innervating the stapedius muscle, involved in auditory volume modulation. 
is licking this lollipop over here that's falling down. Perhaps this is part of his act, which is really funny, which reminds us that the facial nerve is responsible for taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And finally, his salivation over here reminds us that salivation, and specifically from the mandibular and sublingual glands, are innervated by cranial nerve 7. Let's move on now to cranial nerve 8. Alright, this is our scene on cranial nerve 8, and it is represented by this 8 ball over here. The 8 ball reminds us of cranial nerve 8, and on top of this 8 ball there is this vest, who is the lifeguard. So this vest reminds us of the vestibulococcular nerve. The vestibulococcular nerve is responsible for hearing and balance. Well, balance we can remember because this lifeguard over here is trying to balance on top of the 8 ball. And his big ears over here remind us of hearing. An important skill for a lifeguard to have. Okay, let's move on now to cranial nerve 9. Alright, this is our scene on cranial nerve 9, the glossopharyngeal nerve. And it is represented by this glass of wine. Wine for 9. Actually, it's a pharaoh glass of wine. The glass pharaoh. Glass pharaoh for glossopharyngeal, as cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Let's talk about the functions of the glossopharyngeal nerve. So we see that pharaoh over here has a stylus in his mouth, which reminds us that the glossopharyngeal nerve innervates the stylopharyngeus, which is involved in elevating the pharynx and the larynx. He also has two things on the posterior one-third of his tongue, a pyramid and a lollipop. Well, the lollipop reminds us is that the posterior one-third of the tongue, for taste, is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, and the fact that he is sensing or feeling this pyramid with the back of his tongue reminds us that the glossopharyngeal nerve is also responsible for a sensation on the posterior one-third of the tongue. So again, the glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for both taste and sensation of the posterior one-third of the tongue. And the fact that Pharaoh over here is swallowing <laughs> reminds us that the glossopharyngeal nerve is also responsible for swallowing as well as salivation, and that's represented by this saliva drop that he's dripping. And the parrot on top of the saliva drop reminds us of the parotid gland, that the glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for innervating the parotid gland. Finally, we take a look at this carrot guy running away from Pharaoh. This carrot guy is really scared. I don't blame him. This carrot guy reminds us of the carotid, the carotid body and sinus. That is, the glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for monitoring carotid body and sinus chemo and baroreceptors. Alright, so just to review, cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve represented by the glass pharaoh over here, and it is responsible for innervating the stylopharyngeus muscle, as well as taste and sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue. Let's move on now to cranial nerve 10. Alright, this is our scene on the vagus nerve, taking place in Las Vegas. Las Vegas for Vegas. And in this hall over here, we have the $10 bill dancing, which reminds us that the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10. He is coughing... <coughs> and then saying uvula. So the coughing reminds us that the vagus nerve is involved in coughing, the talking reminds us that it's involved in talking, and the fact that he's saying uvula reminds us that it's responsible for movements of the uvula. He has this art palette over here as his neck. Well, the fact that it's his neck is not important. The important thing is that this art palette reminds us of the palate, and the fact that there's an up arrow reminds us of the elevation, that the vagus is responsible for upward elevation of the palate. Perhaps this palate is also tasting, which reminds us that the vagus nerve is responsible for taste from the supraglottic region. This heart over here, well actually, this aorta over here that is joining him in the dance reminds us of the aortic arch, that the vagus nerve is responsible for monitoring the aortic arch, chemo and baroreceptors. And finally, this stomach over here, whose name is parasympathetics, reminds us that the vagus nerve is responsible for parasympathetics to the stomach and the other thoracoabdominal viscera. Alright, now let's move on to cranial nerve 11. Okay, we are on cranial nerve 11, and it is represented by this guy over here who has axes stuck in his neck over here. Axes for accessory, as cranial nerve 11 is the accessory nerve. And if we take a look at these axes, they kind of make the number 11, which reminds us that the accessory nerve is cranial nerve 11. Now, due to the fact that this guy over here has axes in his neck, he can no longer turn his head, nor shrug his shoulders as head turning and shoulder shrugging are movements which the accessory nerve is in charge of, since it innervates the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, which are in charge of head turning and shoulder shrugging. Let's move on to the final one, cranial nerve 12. Alright, cranial nerve 12, represented by this glass hippo over here. There's this glass hippo, or the hippo made of glass. Hippo made of glass for hypoglossal, as cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal nerve. We can remember it's cranial nerve 12 because this hippo is trying to get the elf out of the water. Elf for 12. And he is moving his long tongue to catch the elf. 
So the fact that he is moving his tongue reminds us that cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, is responsible for tongue movement. All right, I hope you enjoyed these scenes on the 12 cranial nerves. Remember to check out my site in order to get review cards and quizzes. Take care.